Good morning and welcome back to our off-grid property in North Idaho. Courtney and I have been building this property together over the last two years and with our second winter coming to an end, it's time to start thinking about projects this spring and summer. And so today we're gonna answer one of the most asked questions we've had this winter, which is what happened to the bulldozer? Well, I'm gonna show you what happened to the bulldozer. Last spring, Courtney and I set out to do a massive road improvement with the hopes that we'd be able to get concrete trucks up here and pour the slab in our shop and we quickly realized that with the equipment we had, we weren't gonna get the project done. So I started shopping for bigger equipment and ended up buying a 1965 Caterpillar D8H bulldozer, and it is absolutely massive. We knew virtually nothing about heavy equipment and certainly had never operated a bulldozer before, so there was quite the learning curve. I had so much fun learning how to operate that dozer last summer, and I can't wait to get to use it again this summer. We've got some huge projects planned, and the dozer is gonna play a key role in that but it's got some deferred maintenance and some repairs that I'd like to do to make sure that it stays serviceable through the entire summer. We've got some warm temperatures and a lot of rain in the forecast, and this road is gonna turn into snot. So I'd like to get the dozer moved before that happens so that we don't tear up the road and we don't get the dozer stuck. It's cold and I haven't fired the dozer up since the end of last summer. I really don't know what to expect. Step one, I'm headed out right now to get the battery on the charger. I can't believe I actually unhooked the battery. That's the positive and negative. Oh, two seconds. On. AC on. There we go. Bad battery charging aborted. <laughs> no! Which probably means that this battery got too cold out here over the winter and lost all its charge. I was a little worried about this, but luckily I have a plan B. All right, time for plan B, but I don't actually know if this battery is charged either. All right, charging. 12 volts. All right, this one's 71% charged. We'd like to give a huge thanks to GrowWatt for sponsoring today's video. Today we're gonna to be using our Infinity 1300 to get this dozer up and running. Just like today, a lot of times when we're working on projects around the property, we end up pretty far away from the shop and we need power. With 1800 watts of total output, this unit is capable of powering basically any power tool or household appliance, but it's also small and lightweight, allowing us to easily carry it from project to project. So while we wait for the dozer's battery to charge, I'm gonna start doing a once over. Okay, first things first, is there diesel in it? Yes, there is. Diesel's at about 20%, so it's got about 20 gallons, plenty to get to the shop. Now we're gonna check the gasoline. This dozer actually has a pony engine, which is a small gasoline engine that's used to start the large diesel engine. And if I remember correctly, the gas cap is right here somewhere. There it is. Yep, it has gas. I would say also about 20%. Next is to check the engine oil and the big engine. Well, it's got oil. So I'm actually supposed to check the engine oil on this dozer with the engine hot and running, but I wanted to make sure there was at least oil in it before we gave it a shot at starting. Uh, hydraulic fluid? No. 
We're supposed to check this with the transmission hot and the engine idling. So it's low right now, but probably because I'm not checking it right. So next up is the coolant. And this is the one I'm most worried about. I mean, I know I checked it last summer and that it had coolant. I just really hope that we didn't make a huge mistake by not winterizing this thing more. I'm trying to go. <laughs> this is the only way I can figure out how to get to it right here. I think it's like right here. Okay, it's this thing. That's the thermostat. And this is the radiator. <laughs> Well, I do think the coolant is low, but I can see it in there. So I know it's not empty. Now let's check the oil on the pony engine. Where, oh, there it is. Perfect. All right, all the fluids look good. It was super cold last night and I think it's about 28 degrees right now. I brought a heat gun and we're gonna see if we can get a little heat on this pony engine before we try to start it. Alrighty. Oh. 1400. The Infinity 1300 has 1 1.4 kilowatt hours of capacity, which means it can run a high powered heat gun like this for an hour. And that's pretty impressive. We'll start on the carburetor. All right, and now we wait for the motor to warm up. I might need to use that thing to warm me up. No, it's for the dozer. Ah, it actually feels kind of warm. Cool. I think that's going to really help the pony motor start. Well, I think the only thing left to do is see if we can get this pony motor fired up. I have a love-hate relationship with this dozer. I love this dozer because it's an incredible tool, and I know that Riley loves operating it but it is so loud and it is so hard to film and I don't want to get run over. And then Riley's going to have to get it out of here somehow. How tall do you think the snow is right there? Five feet, six feet of so, snow? Yeah, right here where I've been. You guys are going to get your wish and you're going to get to see Riley plow some snow with this dozer today, I think. Okay, step one is to turn the fuel on to the pony motor. Okay, step two is to turn the choke on. And now it's time to start it. It's been so long, I don't remember where all the buttons are. Here we go. This is the starter for the pony motor. Are you ready? Never. Uh, well, we got a little click and then nothing. It's like it's either the starter is stuck or it doesn't get enough juice. Okay. I can feel what it feels like the starter solenoid engaging, but I'm not really sure. So either the battery isn't charged enough or the starter motor on the pony engine is frozen. I want to start by investigating this ice ball around the starter solenoid. Which also means more heat gun. Through the Grow Up Migro app, we can connect to the Infinity 1300 either over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, allowing us to change settings, monitor loads, and turn things on and off. So right here, we can turn on the AC output. The heat gun turns on. And then when we're done, we can turn it off again. And if you connect the Infinity 1300 to Wi-Fi, it allows you to monitor the device from anywhere in the world, which is great for powering things like security cameras when we're away from the property. Well, let's try starting it again. Attempt number two to start the pony engine. Oh yeah, okay. It's turning over, but it's really slow. Oh, it's so close. It is so close to starting. started. That is amazing. I'm letting the pony engine warm up for a little while. And something that's really cool about this pony engine is that it's actually circulating the coolant from the main engine through the pony engine to start pre-warming the coolant for the main engine. Also, the output air from the exhaust of the pony engine runs across the intake of 
the big engine so that it will also start to preheat the intake manifold and therefore preheat the intake air into the big engine. So while the Pony engine is a really kind of old, archaic technology, it's also super cool because it helps to start preheating the big engine, making cold starts in climates like this a lot easier. I can tell now that the Pony engine is warmed up. I'm gonna kick it into gear so that it starts turning over the big engine. There's a gearbox there with two speeds. So I'm gonna start by turning the big engine over at a very slow speed. And then once the oil's thinned out and the engine's warmed up, we'll kick it over into a higher speed, let it warm there for a little bit until we start building compression. Alrighty, let's see. So choke off. Oh no, it died. Dang it, okay. The goal now is to get this pony engine running smoothly so we can engage the big engine. It definitely needs a carburetor rebuild and it's a little finicky. Choke back on, a little bit of throttle, start it again. There it goes, okay. A little more throttle. And a little less choke. Okay, now over here, this lever is engaging high speed and low speed. So that should be low speed. And now we're gonna engage the pony engine into the big engine. Trying again to engage it. All right, we're engaged. So now the big engine is turning over at a low speed because I've got that gearbox in low range. Now with the big engine turning over, the pony motor is under a little bit of load and I'm gonna try to feather the choke out and get the RPMs up a little bit. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and let it run like this for a couple of minutes. Well, it seems like so far so good. And we're just gonna keep letting it warm up and then it's time to drive it out of this hole that it's in. All right, now we're gonna kick the pony motor into high gear so that it spins the big engine faster. Step one is to disengage the pony motor and then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna kick this over into that gear. And then now we're gonna re-engage the pony motor again. All right, there we go. Now we're in high gear. So now we're just gonna go ahead and sit and wait and let this big engine warm up a little bit because it's been a long, cold couple of months. At this point, I'm feeling really hopeful that this dozer is gonna start. Getting the pony motor started was sort of my biggest concern and the pony engine started, it's running good. The big engine's turning over, which means that the only step we have left to do is to crack open the throttle and give the big engine some fuel. I think it'd be smart to let this thing warm up for a little while, so stand by. Something that's really difficult for me, especially on these big filming days, is keeping all of our camera gear charged. Something that's awesome about the Infinity 1300 is it has six USB ports, which means I can charge all of our camera gear at once, and the wireless phone charger on the top also means I can make sure my phone stays charged. The lithium iron phosphate battery technology used in the Infinity 1300 has an incredible lifespan of over 3,000 charge cycles. And of course, charging the unit is equally as important as discharging the unit. And the Infinity 1300 has three convenient ways to charge it. There's an AC plug right here that lets us plug it into the wall of the house and charge it at 1200 watts, which means that this thing can get fully charged in less than two hours. There's also a car adapter plug so we can charge it while we're on the go in the car. Or my favorite is the solar input. This unit can accept up to 800 watts of solar panels and up to 100 volts of solar input, which makes it compatible with almost any solar panel on the market, including rigid residential style panels. If you'd like to learn more about the Infinity 1300 portable power station, you can head to the link in the description below. Do you guys hear that? Yeah, me neither. It stopped running. Okay, what is going on now? My best guess is it's out of gas. Yes, definitely out of gas. Luckily, that's an easy fix. I don't think it gets very good fuel economy. We haven't even gone anywhere. 
don't spill the gas all over the hot exhaust. Did you bring a fire extinguisher? There's one right here. I keep one on the dozer. patiently wait for the dozer to warm up. I'm not good at being patient or awaiting. Pony motor's been turning over now for a little while and uh, it's time to kick the compression on. So until this point, the exhaust valves have been open on the big engine so that it spins over freely. Now we're gonna give the motor some compression so it can start building some heat. Of course, this is all with the fuel turned off so that it's not gonna start yet, although it is kind of chugging away like it wants to start. <laughs> now we're just gonna let it do that for a little while. Okay, here we go. It's time to start the engine, which all we have to do now is crack the throttle. Are you ready? Courtney says she's ready. And just like that, she fired right up. <laughs> it has never started that well. That was awesome. The pony motor automatically disengages once its flywheel spins at a certain speed. So once the big engine started, the pony motor kicked itself out of gear and disengaged from the big engine. Now I have to shut the pony motor off by turning its fuel supply off. I thought I'd give you a little tour of my cockpit and what all these controls do. So here in my right foot is the decelerator pedal. You push the pedal in to slow the engine down. The next two pedals here are the brakes left and right. So those brake each track left and right. Our left brake doesn't work, so we only have right brake. It makes this thing a little interesting. These two here are the clutches. So before you hit the brakes on a track, first you engage the clutch that disengages the drive on that side, then you can hit the brakes. This right here is the throttle, this controls you know, that controls the throttle, and then we have our decelerator pedal on top of that. This one right here controls the blade, blade up, down, left, and right. And then right here in my left hand is the transmission. We have three forward gears and three reverse gears. It is an automatic transmission. Let's see what happens. I'm looking at Courtney now to get the wave, and she says, go ahead. I'm gonna start by just lifting the blade. It does the blade lift. Oh yeah, all right, blade lifts. And now I'm gonna use the blade to lift the entire dozer to make sure the tracks aren't stuck to the ground. All right, tracks are not stuck to the ground. We're gonna engage it into first gear. And we're moving. Ooh, guys, we are pushing snow.
Well, that was the hole that she was in. Now she's up there on the road. All right, time to shut her down. And just like that, our yard got a lot smaller. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Pretty much one of the reasons the dozers hasn't been parked here is because it takes up so much dang space. I'm really relieved because as Riley was driving it on our only road, I had this thought of like, what if it breaks down right now? Did driving the dozer today make you like way excited for the yeah, summer? Yeah. I am so excited for the projects we have this summer. I mean, this dozer is so powerful. I just moved a giant mountain of snow and I couldn't even tell what was in front of me. This isn't the only equipment we're going to be running this summer. We have some really big plans, including a really big piece of equipment for me. So I can't wait to start sharing these projects with you guys. It's going to be a great summer. You're going to want to stay tuned. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Who is doing donuts in my front yard? All right, time for plan B, but I don't actually know. <laughs> a big hole there.